Welcome to episode 47 on the AirHug community. Hello and welcome. My name is Judy Arizoza and I am the host of the AirHug community podcast. And if you're new here, let me just tell you what we're all about. We are a community that believes supporting each other can be wonderful and it helps improve the lives of others as well as our life. We believe in living well and that includes physical fitness, eating well, but also mental fitness. We believe that movement should be fun and that eating to live better should also be fun and delicious. We have conversations and stories from guests and myself that are often inspired by the thousands of conversations I've had one-on-one with working with women over the last dozen years, but also with conversations with several of my besties with our one-on-one walks that we love to take together. So have a listen, and I'm really glad you're here. Thank you so much for joining in. Well, I don't have anything funny to start us off with today. I just have our content. And you know, this really got me pondering. I did not plan on recording this, but it just came up in conversation as things often do. And I thought, you know what, this, I can't get it out of my mind. And so let's talk about it. Here's the big question of the day. Do you believe that everything happens for a reason? And can you prove or disprove this thought? I don't think so, right? But let's continue, all right? So some people think this is just an excuse for not trying to change or improve or better themselves. But other people think it's a means to comfort our pain or a religious belief or something that we've been taught, you know? But either way, um, many people believe that If we hold on to the thought that everything happens for a reason, it helps us to believe that our life has a purpose. So this has really got me thinking because I think um, a few episodes back, I had a guest on named Loretta Sayers. And if you haven't listened to that episode, it's episode number 44. And she talks about how shitty things happen, but it doesn't define us. And I think you could easily get to the thought in that episode that maybe there's a belief against everything happening for a reason because some things are just too hard to process. But I think, you know, that's not really, I think, how it goes. But let's, let's move on, all right? So let's start with the argument against for the argument against believing that everything happens for a reason. And, you know, first of all, I'd like to say that I think this is becoming almost an overused phrase in social media. And, and it, so I think there's a lot of ways that people can, like, just use this as kind of white noise, like, there they go again, right? So that might be an argument against it. A lot of people will believe, and I've even found some things on the internet, because of course, you know, you can look everything up on Google. Um, There's been some people who wrote that they believe this is just a coping mechanism and not a truth at all. And my answer to that is, so what if it is? If it's a coping mechanism for someone and it brings them comfort, or they can get through a difficult time in their life, so what? Call it whatever you want, right? But other people will say that it's a cop-out on responsibility by believing and holding on to the thought that everything happens for a reason. So here's what I have to say for this. Um, The responsibility for success is on you. And this is something that I talk with all the time with my clients. It's like you are responsible for your progress. You're responsible for changing your behavior. And so, you know, no one else can do it for you. No one's going to go to the gym and exercise for you. No one else is going to put the food in your mouth. They might put the food in your refrigerator. You might even have a personal chef, but they're still not responsible for the choices you make, right? But there's also a responsibility for creating meaning out of life's disappointments. That's also on you. So you can look at life's disappointments and you can just throw your hands up and use them as an excuse or you can you can 
spend a little time pondering and trying to figure out why did these things happen and what can I learn? Maybe I don't know why they happened, but what can I learn from them? So it's really important to consider how you feel about these things, how you feel about, you know, excruciatingly painful events or super wonderful events, right? We can't take those for granted either. If you ask me, I do believe that I do believe that things happen for a reason and I believe it's our responsibility in life to figure out what these reasons are. Why were these things brought into our life? So you have to take the angle that um, works for you. I mean, obviously, life's worst tragedies and failures can be very hard to digest, right? They can, and we can feel overwhelmed, you know, but you know, if we take a step back and think like, what is this trying to teach us or what can we learn from it? You know, maybe we can actually, I don't want to say justify it, but actually almost accept it. You know, you can never, I don't think, justify tragedies, right? So, but I, I, I do not believe that it's lazy to think that things happen for a reason. And there is a strong school of thought for that. And it's totally up to you how you want to go with that. But for me, I believe that the script of our life is written by a higher power and there's some reference to that with my faith, you know, for and if you have that faith, that's personal. If you don't, that's personal. So the point is, it's not whether or not this is an absolute truth. You know, it's not like the earth is round. Everything happens for a reason. The sun sets in the west. No, those are one of those things is not like the other. Okay. Uh, It's not an absolute truth. It's a very personal belief or non belief. And it's partly a matter of having a higher spiritual power and belief. And partly also a method to just process situations, how you deal with rotten situations. So again, it's highly personal. Now, I, I do believe in a higher power. Um, for me, that's God. And I believe that when I pray, I'm praying for acceptance and understanding. I'm not praying to change the course of a path. You know, I, I do believe that some of these things are already scripted. I believe the future is already scripted out, but that it's for us to find out and to learn from as we go along. So I know this is not necessarily true for other people, and it doesn't have to be, right? You know, I think back to 9-11, and obviously that was, that was probably one of the most horrific things in our lifetime, in my lifetime, and I initially felt, it was kind of weird what I felt. I was trying to process this, and I felt that the suicide bombers were... Um, were overwhelmingly victims of brainwashing. And it's not that I could forgive them, but I felt some sort of overwhelming sadness for them. And I was angry, of course, but I felt the sadness because I felt so sad that that the religious beliefs of their of their culture would be so cruel to both them and to other human beings. I just could not comprehend that. So I, I had a hard time coming around believing that it, it happens for a reason. And I could not explain it, you know, and then I I think to myself, you know what, maybe it was scripted before time, maybe it wasn't. Again, you have to figure out how you stand on that. But I do think that it's not always for us to know. We're not going to be able to comprehend everything in our life. And so sometimes when we don't comprehend things, we do fall back on that line of, Everything happens for a reason. And sometimes we don't find things out till much later. You know, the timeline of how we want things to go might not necessarily be the timeline of how they actually play out as much as we want to find things out. You know, I'm sure you all have things that you are dying to know about, you know, but you don't, you know, (laughs) even think about um, people expecting babies. Like we never used to know if we were having a boy or a girl and we couldn't script that. We couldn't figure that out. That was something to know for the future. And now that's, uh, you know, technology has changed, but you know, in some, to some degree, we know if we're going to have a healthy or unhealthy baby, but we still don't know everything. You know, we still don't know everything and we just have to 
to let things play out as they will. So, and I would argue that we're not supposed to know certain things, you know. So a lot of this boils down to a matter of faith in my eyes, but it's also just a matter of how you process things. So, you know, I think for people to accept it as for a reason and use it as an excuse is definitely a poor excuse just to stay stuck. And if you think of it that way, it is lazy if you're believing in that. If you want to just accept things and you want to, I like to go to that Maya Angelou quote, which I didn't put in my notes, but it pops into my head very often. And she talks about getting to a certain point point in life and being stuck. And it's kind of just like parking. You sit on a park bench or you park your car, you do the everyday mundane things and you don't put a lot of thought into it and you just kind of stay there and pretty soon you're pretty unhappy unhappy with those things. But once you get to a point where you realize that you are stuck, you've been parked for too long, then you have the option. Do you want to take action and move on or do you want to stay stuck? You know, and there's discomfort in both, but you have to decide which discomfort you want to stay with. You want to stay with the discomfort of, of stuck and maybe boring or painful, or do you want to have the discomfort of the unknown and trying something new? You know, it's just a, a way to think about it. So I do um, generally disagree that people are lazy. I think they just go through phases and eventually people will take action or they won't. You know, it's, it's a very personal thing. But here's the thing, um, even though I just gave you a quote, I, I, I take that with a little grain of salt because I want you to take it with a little grain of salt and just think about things from your own perspective because you can't just live by the sayings and quotes of other people that we see popping up all the time. You can definitely, you know, look at them for inspiration, but then sit with them for a while and then take a stand and then decide, are you going to, do you identify with it, that quote, you know, of being parked or everything happens for a reason, or do you believe otherwise, you know? And I think this is a gut feeling. It's a gut feeling for or against whatever it is you believe, and it's what your truth is. And with so much going on, and I do refer to social media a lot, so much going on in social media, sometimes I think it can be hard, but I will say one thing, the older I get, the more um, lines in the sand that I will draw and that I know what I know to be my own truth. And I, I hope that's true for you as well, whatever it is. Take some time, sit alone with yourself. If you have to, you know, put that phone in a different room and don't let anyone or anything tell you what your beliefs are. Sit with it and decide. If you believe everything happens for a reason, then know why you believe that and go with it. And if you don't, then know why you believe that and go with that. So this is a quickie and it was kind of a spinoff just on a conversation, a random conversation that came up. But I really thought that it would be worth hashing out over here on the Air Hug community. And so I just want to thank you for listening in today. And if this got you to thinking, please take a screenshot and share it. Send it in a text message to some of your dearest friends. Or if you do go on social media, go ahead and post it and say, hey, take a listen to this and and figure out where you are. But do one thing. Don't stay on the fence. Get on one side or the other and defend your feelings. So I'd like for you to check back every Tuesday for a new episode here on the Air Hug Community. And thank you very much. It is my privilege always to talk in your ear. And I'm always grateful for those of you who do listen. Thank you so much. And I will see you next week.